Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we'll look at some advanced problems using the concepts of application of derivatives. We'll do problems on the first three videos, uh, basic application of derivatives, uh, tangents and normals and the concept of maxima and minima. So let's start off. We are in this question asked what are the intervals in which we could also be asked what are the regions in which f of x is increasing and f of x is given to us to be 4x cubed minus 6x squared minus 72x plus 30. Now in the videos based on the theory we saw we were always given the region. In this case we are given a function, it, this function is actually valid on the entire number line from minus infinity to infinity and we are asked what are the intervals in which the function is increasing. So we know that a function is increasing when its derivative is positive, right? So we just calculate f dash of x which is df by dx and it comes out to be 12x squared minus 12x minus 72 which we can also write as 12 times x squared minus x minus 6. Right. So this is the function for the derivative of f of x. We can also write it as 12 times uh, x minus 3 times x plus 2 and we want this to be greater than 0 so that the function is increasing. If this function f dash of x is greater than 0 this, that means f of x is increasing. Right. So let's let's look at the number line. What happens when x is very large when x is infinity then this term is obviously greater than 0. So obviously f x is increasing as x continues to decrease this term is still 0 until x becomes less than 3. Once x becomes less than 3 let's say x becomes 2 then this term becomes negative but this term is positive so their product becomes negative. So from 3 to infinity f dash of x is greater than 0. Once we make x smaller than 3 this term is negative and this term is positive. So let's see from where it starts but from some point to 3 f dash of x is less than 0. Then it becomes greater than 0 again because for minus infinity this is positive right minus infinity into minus infinity. So the point at which it changes sign again is the point in which this becomes negative. In this region in this whole region this is negative and this is positive. But if we go beyond minus 2, then this term will be negative as well. So this is from minus 2 to 3 and from minus infinity to minus 2, it is again greater than 0. So the graph of this would probably be something like this. It would be increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. So it increases from minus infinity to minus 2. It decreases from minus 2 to 3 and it increases from 3 onwards. Right. So this is how you can calculate whether or not a function is increasing or decreasing, decreasing in any particular interval. We were given the entire function and we were asked to find out the intervals. Right. Let's look at another function. We will be given the implicit equation for the function that is the equation between x and y which is given to us to be x to the power 2 by 3 plus y to the power 2 by 3 is equal to 2. This is the function of x and y and we need to find out the value of the normal or rather the equation of the normal at 1 comma 1. Right. We know that uh, uh, the curve passes through 1 comma 1 because x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 do satisfy this equation. Now we need to find out the normal. So for the normal we need to know the slope of the normal. Right. We know how to calculate the equation of a line when we know the slope and the point through which it passes. We know it passes through 1 comma 1 so we need the slope of the normal. For that we need the slope of the tangent 
From that we can get the slope of the normal. The slope of the tangent is dy by dx, which is what we need. Now we could try to write this in the form of y is equal to fx, but we could also try to differentiate this explicitly, implicitly, sorry. In that case, what we would get is d by dx of x to the power 2 by 3 plus y to the power 2 by 3 is equal to the derivative of 2, which is 0. This gives the power 2 by 3 is 2 by 3 x to the power 1 by 3. 2 by 3 x to the power minus 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 y to the power 1 by 3 into dy by dx. Because we've used the chain rule here. D of y to the power 2 by 3 by dx is equal to d of y to the power 2 by 3 by dy into dy by dx. And we know this is equal to 0. And x and y both are 1. So from that what we get is 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 dy by dx is equal to 1. Is equal to 0. Which gives me dy by dx is equal to minus 1 which is m. Now this is the slope of the tangent. We know that if the slope of the tangent is m and the slope of the normal is m dash, then m dash m is equal to minus 1, which means m dash is minus 1 by m. And if m is equal to minus 1, then m dash is equal to 1. So we know that the curve passes through 1, comma 1 and 1. Now we know that its slope is 1 as well. So we can obviously find out the equation y minus y naught, that is y minus 1, is equal to 1 times x minus 1. If we wanted the equation of the tangent, it would have been uh, y minus 1 is equal to minus 1 times x minus 1. And we can see the product of the slope of the normal and the tangent is minus 1 as it always should be. Uh, let's look at another problem, this time involving maxima and minima. But let's now, instead of looking at just trying to get the maximum and minimum value of a function, let's try to look at some word problems. So the first problem we look at is, so the, the question is, find two positive numbers whose sum is 16 and the sum of their cubes is minimum. So let's say the two numbers are x and y. Then we need x cube plus y cube to be the minimum possible value. Right. Now we've only seen how to calculate the minima as a function of one variable. This seems to have two variables x cube plus y cube. Right. We, if this is z, then we need to find the minimum value of z, right? But we are given one possible relation between x and y. We are given that x plus y is equal to 16. From that, we get y is equal to 16 minus x. Now, once you have y is equal to 16 minus x, you can input that here and you get z, which is the sum of their cubes as a function of one variable x. So it comes out to be x cubed plus 16 minus x whole cube. Right. Now we can say dz by dx is equal to 0 because z has to be a minimum function. Right. Which means 3x squared, that is the derivative of x cubed, plus the derivative of this term will be 3 times 16 minus x whole squared multiplied by minus 1, the derivative of 16 minus x. Right. Which means uh, 3x squared plus 3x squared minus, oh sorry, this is minus 3x squared minus 3 into 256, which is 16 whole squared, plus 3 into 2 into 16, that is 3 into 32, that is 96x. And this needs to be 0. From that, we can get x is equal to 3 into 256 by 96 which comes out to be, you cancel this, you get 32 and you get 8. So x is equal to 8, y is equal to 16 minus x, 
which is also 8. So for these, the sum of the cubes is the minimum. Right. 8 cube plus 8 cube will simply give you uh, 64 into 8, 512 plus 512, 1024. If you instead took, let's say, 15 and 1, you would get 15 cube plus 1. 15 cube is much larger than 1025. You take 14 and 2, you'll still get a bigger value. As you decrease one and increase the other, the minimum value will come at x and y, both having the same value, which is equal to 8. These are the types of problems which generally are asked in examinations. Let's look at another word problem. In this problem, uh, we have a square sheet of some material, let's say cardboard, which has a side of 18 units. And from this square sheet, we will be making a box by cutting off four corners. So we'll cut off four corners, square corners, and you can imagine what we'll be left with and from that, we'll create a square box where this will, this will be the base of the square box and this side will be the height of the square box. We'll turn all these four sides inwards. Right. Now the question is, where should we make this cut so that the volume of the box is the maximum possible value? So the only question is, where should this line be cut? Right. This is x, this is x, this is x, this is x. So what is left is 18 minus 2x. So when we close these flaps, what we'll get is a square of side of length 18 minus 2x and the height will be of length x. So the volume will be the area of the base, 18 minus 2x whole squared, multiplied by the height, which will be x. To get this to be the maximum value, dv by dx needs to be 0. Now what is that? 18 minus 2x whole squared plus x times 2 times 18 minus 2x. I'm using the chain rule here. Multiplied by the derivative of 18 minus 2x, which is minus 2. And this is 0. So from that I get 118 minus 2x will just cancel. So 18 minus 2x uh, minus 4x is equal to 0, which gives me x is equal to 3. So if we cut at x is equal to 3, then 3 and 3 will be cut, what we will be left with is 12, and in that case the volume will be the maximum. Right. You can actually differentiate it again and see that it's negative, d2v by dx squared is equal to negative, so it indeed is the maximum value. Now if you have asked where should we cut it to get the maximum volume, the answer is x is equal to 3, 3 meters from the edge. If you are asked what is the maximum possible value, then you just put 3 back into this. So the maximum possible value will be 18 minus 6, that is 12 whole squared multiplied by 6. Right? So this will give you the maximum possible value of this volume. So this is how you can see that you not only need to be given explicitly y as f of x, but you can be given many word problems in which you have to find the answer. You might be given uh, you might be given a curve between x and y and you might have to find out the shortest distance between this curve and this point. Let's say this is x0 and y0. Then you would need root of uh, y0 minus y whole squared plus x0 minus x whole squared and this would need to be the minimum value. Right. You could say that we have two points and find the third point here, A, B, C. Find C is such that A, C plus B, C is the minimum. Then you will take this distance, root of x0 minus x1 whole square plus y0 minus y1 whole square. Same for here. You take the sum and that will need to be the minimum value. So whenever you need to find the minimum or maximum value of a function, you just make sure that that is a function of one variable. You'll be given other things to make sure it's the function of one variable. For example, here you'll be given y as a function of x, so you'll just have x as a variable left. You might be given y is equal to x square or something. And then you differentiate it, that'll give you the critical points. After that, to know which are the maximum, minima, or points of inflection, you double differentiate it. Wherever that's negative, it'll be the maximum. Wherever that's positive, it'll be the minima. Wherever the double derivative is zero, will be the point of inflection. Thank you.